Last meeting, we started loading of steel beams and the columns. And we learned that we have different names for beams. Sometimes we can call it floor beams, girder, joist, lintels, Berlin, rafter, girt, or stringer. All of them the same meaning, beams, but in different location in the structure. And we learned something about loading of this beam. We would like each panel in this type of structure to be one way slip. What you mean by one way? Longer divided shorter, greater than two. And I give you some numbers. You can use them in your calculation. And we covered some problems. And we would like to talk about inclined beams. I have a question. What do you mean by inclined beam? I mean something like this. Can you see the uh, Berlin's? These Berlins supported by what? This rafter of beam. Rafter? Yeah. Rafter, here you go. Rafter means beam, sloped beam, like this. Sloped beam. If you have a sloped beam like this, we can call it rafter. This rafter is inclined or sloped like this. What do you expect about the Berlin? Let me explain it here. Here is the rafter. is inclined like this. Here is the Berlin. That makes sense? Because I cannot have a rafter like this and I cannot construct the Berlin like this. This bottom flange should be parallel to this surface of the rafter. So if you are looking here, the surface of the rafter is inclined. So this one will be inclined also like this. What is the problem? The problem is the typical beam looks like this. And your applied force looks like this. So you can expect a moment like this. What is the issue? The issue right now is your load, which is on weight or life load or any applied load, are vertical. So this vertical force must be broken in two components by this angle, for example. If we assume this is the angle theta, Yeah, here you go. This one's angle. So we have the force cosine theta and we have a force sine theta. So the final conclusion in this position, your beam will have two components, one vertical and one horizontal. The vertical one will cause moment like this. The horizontal one will cause moment like this. So we have my I'm sorry, we have mx about x axis and we have my about y axis. So if you have a beam like this and the applied force like this in the same direction, we don't have issue. We have only moment like this mx about x axis 
But if your beam for some reason is inclined like this, why are the beam is inclined? Because the supporting beam for this one are inclined. So your applied force is still vertical because the applied force is a dead load. So we have two component, one in the same direction of the beam and the other one perpendicular to the beam. So the vertical one will make moment like this. The horizontal one will make moment like this. So we have MX and we have MY, which you call by axial moment. This is the case for Berlin's. This is the case for Berlin. So if you have a beam and this beam is inclined or tilted like this because the rafter is sloped. Okay, go ahead and calculate your weights, life load, everything normal. But at the end, this vertical W must be broken to two components. One vertical component parallel to this web and one horizontal component which is perpendicular to this web. So the final conclusion, we will have M about X and M about Y. How can I do it? We have two options. I have, uh, actually, I suggest the second option. Go ahead and uh, uh, get the moment from the applied load, from uh, W, before making any components. So W, L square, divide it. Once you get M ultimate, go ahead and get this moment, multiply it by cosine, multiply it by sine, to get the component for MX and MY, and that's all. So the beam must be designed under the effect of by axial moment. We will cover this one in more details uh, later by uh, providing an example. But just remember, if your beam is tilted because the supporting beam is sloped, so the vertical weight or the vertical load, which can give you a moment, WL squared divide 8, this moment must be uh, broken to two components, MX and MY, by using the tilted angle of the B. Any question? Any question? Okay, four columns. I have a question. If you have a column like this one, can you tell me, uh, and I can figure out what is the value of dead loot, which equal gamma concrete time uh, T concrete, and I can figure out the value of life loot, from a table, bound per square feet, and this one will be bound per square feet. That means each square feet in this floor will have dead load and will have life load. Can you tell me what is the reaction on this column? We have two options. The first one, we can solve it using Risa floor or any software, or we can use this technique. What you mean? Between this column and this column, I can divide the distance. Between this column and this column, I can divide the distance. Between this column and this column, I can divide the distance. Between this column and this column, I can divide the distance. So each column can get an area assigned to it by uh, from center line to center line. So the final conclusion this area will be assigned to this column. If you would like to get reaction on this column from one floor, one floor equal, equal what? W did loot 
time 1.2 plus W live fluid time 1.6. All of them time area assigned to this code. Dead load, W dead load, TS time gamma concrete. W live load from a table based on the function of the structure. Converted them to be ultimate. So I will multiply the dead load by 1.2, the live load by 1.6. Add them together. Multiply this value by area assigned to this column from center line to center line, from center line to center line. I can give you the R ultimate from one floor. If you multiply this reaction ultimate from one floor time number of floors, I can give you the P ultimate on this column and then I can design it. Any question? This point is very important, guys. Uh, also, this uh, uh, point is very important for a professional engineer exam. If you have a column, another column, another column, another column, another column. This column can be called interior column. If you would like to figure out what is the area assigned to this column, okay, between this one and this one, we will draw center line. Between this one and this one, I will draw center line at the mid distance. Between this one and this one, center line. Between this one and this one, another center line. Finally, you can find this area will be assigned to this column. So if you would like to figure out what is the reaction, ultimate reaction from one floor on this column, okay. 1.2 W dead loot, 1.6 W live loot, add them together, and as a final answer, multiply it by area. This assigned area. You can get the reaction on the column from one floor. If you have only building from one floor, that's it. If you have a building like your project, Three floors, okay, the P ultimate on this column equal this reaction time number of floors. Once you get the total load on the column, I can design it. If it's a concrete column, we learned this last semester. If it's a steel column, we will learn this next week. So, how to design, uh, I'm sorry, how to get the load on a column. We have two techniques. The first one using a software. I will show it to you right now. The second one, I can use my calculation to figure out the total load on a column.